Hey everyone, it's Barry from Power Apps Academy. Welcome to our fourth video in our HR form series. And today we're going to cover off our HR absence form, which is similar to a sick form where you capture information about someone who's going to be off sick. And then it will send some of the information, the relevant information to the HR department and some information relevant to the workforce management department just so that they can register the sick person and update their rosters, etc. So, um, the first part of the video will just be a demo of how it works and then the second part will we'll look at how to configure the form. Don't forget if you want to get this app up and running in your business quickly we partner with powerappify.com so you can go over there and download the app, install it, customize it to suit your business needs and get it up and running in your business in no time. You can check out all the details in the description of this video. Please remember to hit up the likes and subscribe to our channel. It really means a lot and helps us out. So let's hop right into it. So here we're going to demo our HR absence notification form. This is our fourth form in the series. We've done uh, some other videos around uh, our starters form, leavers form, role change form. This is our absence form. Uh, standard look and feel for all our HR forms. We've got this bar at the top here. Um, I, uh, I, I'm logged in, you can see over there, and then today's date. Um, in our example, we've got uh, different regions. So we have global business and um, there's different HR departments for each region and also there might be different w workforce management teams. Now you can simplify this if you're only in one region, say EMEA, then you can remove the rest and default the email address to EMEA. And if you don't use workforce management, you can just delete this and shift this form over into the center. So uh, for this example, I'll click on North America. You see a little flag appears over there. I'm going to search in my directory for um, our person who's called an absent in this example, which is John Deere. You can see his manager and his team are automatically populated there. If any of these values are incorrect, then you can select there and let's say, actually, I'm. you think that I'm his manager instead of Anna. You can put that in there. If the team, I could also update the team as well. Uh, he's called in. He's going to be absent from the 6th um, up until the 10th. Uh, can't ask for a reason. Called in sick all week scheduled shifts let's say uh, that person's on night shift all week don't forget this part's going to the workforce management team uh, is cover affected we can just say yes because maybe there's a limited number on of people who work in and now we're going to have to find someone else to cover is this overtime yes because it's night shift uh, and then um, you can see all the information's up here all the code uh, is really in this button on select so we'll run through that um, as we have a look at how we configure the form so if I click on that quickly nip over to my outlook and the sent items we can see here this email sent to HR and it basically is all the HR information that we collected in the form you can see it also sends to uh, Anna was the default person who was the manager we updated it to Barry it's sent to both of the managers just in case you could maybe just send it to the updated one or uh, you can choose how that works uh, for you and then um, the workforce management one is sent to the workforce management now these email addresses are obtained f through a SharePoint list which we'll cover in the uh, when we have a look at how it's configured I'll show you how it pulls the, the email addresses from a SharePoint list um, you could also hard code them but uh, because uh, this example uses multiple email addresses for different regions that's why it pulls a value from SharePoint and then uh, because we updated the manager it also sends an email to the IT team uh, just to double check that the ma the value of the manager for that person is correct and this is a way just to keep Active Directory details up to date alright let's have a look at how the form is configured so in this part of the video we're having a look at how our absence notification form is configured um, first of all, let's have a look at this component piece at the top. This is basically the standard bar at the top, which is just um, I'm logged in. shows a photo of whoever's logged in. You can just use that code over there to get that. This is just the logged in user, user brackets up full name for whoever's logged in. This is a label, this is a label, this is an image of uploaded. So that's the standard component that I, I go across all the screens um, except the success screen. And in this, uh, this app, we only have one screen. So that's uh, fairly straightforward. These again are just some uh, rectangles I've put in and um, it, it basically has some labels in there which 
update depending on the information I pull down here. So we can have a look at here. So basically, there's an expected manager and um, some other text in there. This is just a label with um, absent days. Just works out um, how many days I'm going to be absent uh, based on the values that put in the dates over there. And um, over here, this is just a um, se selection. So if we go um, input. It's just a radio uh, box with some different selections in there. Um, here are the selections and the items property. If you've only got one, let's say you're in either North America or EMEA, you can just have one radio box in there. Actually, you don't actually need a radio box. You can just default your variable to um, to whatever um, you know uh, location you are. So, um, well, you don't actually need that at all. And then this is a combo box. Uh, I've covered these in some of my videos. So it's quite a, you know, just something to know. Uh, combo box. If you want to search your directory, users Office 365 users dot search user v2 search term is the name of this combo box. I started with cbo underscore absence notify form and then select staff member. That's what I've called this combo box. Dot search text dot value just means as you're typing in there, it'll search for you know names that start with that. Just a note on the advanced tab for this these display fields and search fields must be display name if they're not it's not going to work as expected um, you don't want to be able to select multiple names you just want one and then is searchable must be true so uh, you can just copy that text for yours and then um, these are just labels and it's just depending on the name in here it's going to find uh, the manager of the name selected in that combo box is going to populate that with that there. Uh, same with the team. It's going to be uh, that person selected what the, what department they're in. This person over here. And if they're wrong, um, I've selected these check boxes here. Uh, if you'll see that this has a um, this is this update manager combo box, you can, you'll see that it has um, on visible is select if this checkbox is true then this will become visible and that will allow us to then do a similar search as the top one to, to uh, add in uh, the person we think should be the manager of the person who's called in sick okay exactly the same for this one there's another box there and then this actually uh, pulls from a SharePoint list called team names um, there's a drop it pulls the values uh, of the team available within the business or the departments they can select if the one is registered is incorrect and both of those values are sent if they changed uh, then they will be notified uh, to the service desk or IT department just to go listen someone thinks these are wrong can you double check them and if they are update uh, Office 365 directory with the correct value. These ones are just date pickers uh, with the default of today's date very simple date picker just add in here date picker and then uh, that's fairly straightforward and um, yeah, you can put that in there. There's other you know, uh, bits and pieces you can configure within the date picker in there. N nothing um, too pertinent for this video. And then if you're not sure when they'll be back, you can just select this and that will just mean leave the return date open-ended. Not sure. This is a drop-down box with some items in it. Just uh, some you know, options that are put in there. You can customize those for your department or your business. And uh, this is just some comments to add any additional comments for the HR team. As I said, this side over here is just for workforce management. Scheduled shifts, uh, if there's any information about shifts, this is again just a text box. These are two drop down box with uh, values put in just for cover and overtime. Um, yeah, so it's fairly straightforward. Um, there's nothing too much in it. If we click on this, this is where all the collection of the data happens and the emails are sent. So the variables are set uh, for the hidden email addresses. Now these are um, these two up here. If you just go on, these are just hidden drop-down boxes. So if we click on visible true, and uh, same for this one. Okay, 
you can see when I select, let me just fill in some details over here. Right, can you see these uh, have pulled in values? Uh, these values are from a SharePoint list. I've just flicked over to the SharePoint list. It's called absence form underscore email addresses. For each of the regions, you can see each region will have a different HR email address and a different workforce management email address. Again, you might just have one region with one e HR email address and not you might not have a workforce management. So you can just you know, just customize this. If you don't actually need to use the SharePoint list, if yours is very simple, you can just hard code the email address into the app itself. Um, so that's up to you and that's fairly straightforward to do. Okay, um, but that's, uh, if we click on these, basically you, you'll see that these are um, basically formula, which is, uh, click on items, does a filter, that SharePoint list is called absent form underscore email addresses, looking for the title, where the title equals what the value of the radio button is, okay, and then uh, North America, South America, and see those are exactly the same values as the radio buttons over here. So whatever one's selected, it's going to look, and then it's going to see what is the HR email address for that row, and what is the um, workforce email address you can see there for that row. Okay, so um, that's fairly straightforward. I'll hide both of those again eventually, and uh, let's quickly have a look at the code for the submit button, is where most of the um, coding happens for this form. So at the top uh, we've got the variables setting the variables for the HR and the workforce management email addresses from those hidden uh, drop-down boxes that I've just covered off. So it's setting the addresses in there. Um, the manager's email address because basically it's going to send an email to HR, it's going to send an email to uh, workforce management and within the HR email address it's also going to copy in the manager that's selected there. So either the one that's defaulted, uh, and if that's wrong, it'll send the manager the email address also to the updated manager I put in. So that's what this code does. It basically sets the, the manager, the current manager va value and the updated manager value. Those two variables are used when I'm sending an email to HR, but later I'll show you. Um, if that little checkbox is selected for unknown return date, it basically sets, yeah, if that checkbox is true, then it sets this variable with, I'm not sure when the staff member will return back to work. And that's what will be put in the email just to make it a bit more reader friendly. Um, if, if, if it's uh, open ended. And then this basically sets the HTML formatting for the email that goes to HR. So basically this is the HR subject that's going to happen on the subject of the email. It's going to show um, who the, uh, basically is the absence form for HR. It's going to show this member's name is going to be absent from the dates there and then how many days they're going to be absent for. And then this is the detail of the email that basically staff absence notification. You can see this is bold and underlined. This is all HTML formatting submitted by this user this is new line new line so it just gives you that format when we go back in here and you have a look at the format of the email address you can see it's underlined and all the information that is in there is displayed uh, within this text over here okay so you can just read through it uses all the variables now you've got options right you can either set variables a variable is just setting a value from the field or you could actually instead of the ver you could just for a simple form like this you could just go you know the, the field name dot selected dot text or whatever instead of putting the variable in it's it's up to you um yeah uh, as you can see that's what i've done you haven't used the variable I've just put directly the value of the drop down box in there um uh okay so that's the body of the hr email and the subject of the hr email i do the same for the workforce management i set a variable that contains the subject of the email then I set a variable that contains the body of the email and you can just go through and see what values I've put in there. Um, and then here we go about using the Outlook send connector to send the email. Now you can see because I've created these variables, it's very simple uh, when I come to use the Outlook send function, I just put the variables in. So I'm sending an email to HR and the managers. So I'll use send email but V2. 
I'll put the HR email addresses. These I'm sending to you. You can see I'm putting an AND and a semicolon in there just to uh, separate out the email addresses. And then over here, you can see at the top, I'll put the subject. So that's the HR subject variable. And then the body is next. Let me put the HR um, absence notify HR email body, which is the email body that we put here. So it'll just add this HTML text for the body. And exactly the same for the workforce manager, same connector. We use the email address that we captured uh, from up, up above email address over here and um, then the subject and the body okay and that sends those two emails off and then this part here is the one that goes to uh, IT uh, or whoever you wanted to just saying you know there's someone's made a mod uh, notified us that the, the, the either the team or the manager is wrong this is what they they think it should be can you double check it in office 365 and if need you need to update it, then update it. And then once all that's done, it sends us off to the uh, success screen. So fairly straightforward, um, but it's all done for you. Don't forget, you can either copy what we've done over here, or you can head over to powerappify.com, download the template, it's ready to go. You can import uh, the SharePoint list, probably get, get you up and running, the form ready to rock and roll in just a few minutes. So um, your choice. Hope you enjoyed the video guys, don't forget to smash the like button and please subscribe to our channel. Um, if you enjoyed the video and it's helpful please buy us a coffee or head over to Power Appify and um, you know, get the template for yourself. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.